Hey, welcome to part six. This is my fifth spread in my composition art journal, and I'm really excited to share this with you. It's a very personal page. As I started journaling my thoughts about my daughter, it kind of turned into a poem. It just really flowed naturally. So I'm gonna read it to you. How can I help you be the woman you're meant to be? So much of your weaknesses come from me. I want, to be, I want you to be stronger, braver, better, more free, to overcome my weaknesses I see in me. But only with God will you be your best you. So look up to him and you'll be true. I love you and I want to watch you soar, but I'm weak and I want to carry you forevermore. It's hard to let go, so hard to let you flop, but I know you'll only grow when I stop. So trust in him, my precious little bird. Look to his love, trust in his word. He will help you be all that you can. He loves you the best and he has the best plan. Now I will release you into the air to fly with the wings that he gave you with care. So this is about my youngest daughter, my baby, that I tend to baby too much. I was a youngest child and I'm sure my parents did the same thing to me, but she is going to be going into high school this year and um, yeah, she's mama's girl and I love her so much, And but I know that I need to... Uh, kind of let go a little bit so that was my my process and um because I referred to her as my little bird I grabbed my bird stencils here and I'm practicing on a blank paper because I have not used this distressed ink pad yet and just don't really I don't know stencils so far have not been my strength <laughs> so um had to do a little practice round there this brush I got is actually a makeup brush uh and it works really well, I think, as far as getting into the little stencil holes. But I did find um, that this color, while it kind of goes with the color scheme, I didn't love it. So, um, but even if you don't love the color of the ink that you have, it, it serves as a guide for you to go back over it with markers or whatever you want to use. So um, that's kind of a little tip. If you don't have the right ink color ink pad, just use something kind of neutral that you can go over. And then I have these Signo white uniball pens that I love them when I get them because they just seem so fresh. And then after a while, they just don't work very well. So and then I moved on to this white um, acrylic marker that I was having the same trouble. Just I had to keep priming it and priming it and priming it. So uh, those white pens can be so testy. I know the big Posca pen works pretty faithfully, but I didn't want to use such a thick pen. I don't have the... Um, the thin ones, I only have the big thick ones. Um, so, yeah. Then I grabbed my trusty teal. I got this in a set of like 20 and I it's like my favorite color in the whole pack. So once it runs out of paint, I'm in trouble. I'm gonna have to see if I can order just one. I'm not sure if I can do that. But again, I'm just using the stencil really as a template to outline and I'm going back over it because, because of the orange background, the original color started to turn kind of green. So I wanted to bring out the teal. Normally if you have an animal or a person, something um, with a face that you want it looking into your spread, but I intentionally have it flying off the page because in, on the left, and my little bird is in her safe little cage and on the right she is um, ready to fly so I'm not kicking her out don't think that <laughs> I still have some years with her I just need to let her grow up so black and white highlights I actually don't use black here at all except for the little birdie eyes um, I'm so I'm using the white Posca pen to just create some contrast and pop all over the page. Again, I usually take the original colors of the background and um, see if I have acrylic pens, mar um, markers that uh, match. So here's a brown that I'm using. I really like this combination of orange and kind of aqua blue. And this color yellow is kind of like a banana yellow. It's a little bit muted, not too bright.
So I found that this little doodle method is really like therapeutic. It's kind of, it's, I first started doing it after watching an intuitive video and now I, I love like this like geometric doodle is what I would describe it as. Um, and then I'm just filling in the open negative spaces that it creates in kind of a random order where they're not touching directly, but they kind of are spaced out. It's really fun. I think you should try it. And by the way, you are fully welcome to borrow any ideas that you see in any of my videos. Um, I, I require so much inspiration that um, I am thankful when I see something that makes me go, ooh. So if anything in my videos make you go, ooh, you are welcome to try it. Incorporate it into your pages. I know that it'll look different. I'm not worried about it. If you make a million bucks, then, you know, send me some money or something. But um, just have fun. <laughs> These little leaves are an example of something I kind of borrowed. I uh, wasn't sure what to doodle next, and so I went on, I think, Pinterest and saw a leaf in this similar shape as this and thought I would give it a try, and which is very fitting because this page is kind of about my daughter, and she loves fall. Like, we, that's the really the, like, only time of year that we completely deck the house crazy decorations because fall is so wonderful and then I also thought of it about it being kind of symbolic of this phase of her home life um, you know she has many more decades to live and breathe and explore this world but as far as her being a kid and living at home she's kind of in the fall period you know we've got former years of high school and um, I don't know what's going to be next for her and so yeah not ready to be in the winter phase yet but um so the leaves just seem very fitting. So as I develop my style, I'm finding that my pages don't feel complete unless I have something metallic and shiny on them. <laughs> I just love the feeling of being able to look at my pages from different angles and get reflections and shiny things. So this is just a metallic copper colored marker that I am using to draw out the brown background splashes.
Something I've been trying to do more of is let my pages rest when I'm finished to give myself an opportunity to come and look at it with fresh eyes. So I went back and added some teal details. Here's before and then after I added some more teal details. So this is my final page and I hope you enjoyed watching my process video and my little poem. I hope you come back to join me again and in the meantime, go make some art. Thank you.